Hey you guys, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bass. And today we are going out on the lake to do some summertime bass fishing. This time of year, the bass split. Some go up shallow, some go out deep, they go offshore. Today we're chasing those offshore bass. I love bass fishing this time of year. A lot of people don't like the heat. I embrace it. Not because I enjoy the heat, but because I enjoy what it does to the fish. It positions them in very predictable ways. Fish start getting, if they're shallow, they get up in the shadows. If they're out deep, they get right on structure where they can ambush feed. Uh, it's really an amazing time of year. So today, we had a huge thunderstorm roll through last night, so humidity is sky high. It's going to be in the 90s today. It's going to be hot. I'm already dumping sweat at eight o'clock in the morning, but it should be a really good day. This time of year, you can catch them almost any way you want. I've got all power fishing techniques tied on from a spoon to a topwater, swim baits, crank baits, you name it. We're just gonna go chase these fish around. Come along, it should be a lot of fun. Right when I dropped the trolling motor, fish started busting off the end of this point. That one ate the little three inch Largo shad on a cool baits. So this time of year, Offshore doesn't have to mean deep. These fish, like this right here, may be busting on the surface, but they're doing it out over 10, 20, 30 feet of water. These fish are in about 10 or 12 feet of water. I just dropped the trolling motor to start. This isn't even where I was planning on fishing, but we're on an outside main lake point. And that is the pattern, and there are some fish here. So we might sit here and catch a few before we keep moving. Oh, there's one right there. Another small one though, oh, he's tiny. A lot of times this time of year, when you get these little tiny fish like this that are schooling and busting, if you slow down and get below them, you can catch a really big one. The big ones tend to lurk down below and eat the food that's falling. They're letting the little ones do the work for them. So sometimes you can drop down and slow down and get a really big one. But man, it's tempting to just keep wailing on the ones you can see. slowed down, <clears throat> got on the outside edge of those busting fish, and there's a better one. It really is like clockwork this time of year. Come here. We'll take it. That's awesome. There's our setup. Quarter ounce cool baits, three inch Largo. There's one. Pulled up to another spot. Went to a bigger bait. That's that Azuma Z-Boss 22 crankbait. Just deep cranking. Nice. Now, this time of year, water temperatures are up. The fish's metabolism are up. They like to sit up against structure and ambush, but I also like to trigger a feed response. So I'm throwing that bait, and that is a big crankbait. I'm throwing it on an eight to one reel. Yes, that is a lot of torque on my arm. It's a lot of work to throw it, 
but using that stop and go, burn, 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 pause, burn, 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 pause, I'm able to get those fish to react and you can get them to eat. You can get them to jump up out of their haunt and run that bait down even when they don't want to. To me, this time of year, offshore fishing is intuitive. I pull up in likely places. They don't all have fish, but most do. And if you can get bit right away, you stick around. If you don't get bit, you keep moving. That's kind of the idea. But I recognize that for a lot of anglers, it's intimidating because you don't know where to go. So if you're on somewhere like the Tennessee River, where I am today, we're on Chickamauga, Offshore fishing means a few different things. Of course, it means ledge fishing. We've all heard that term. Going out and finding where that channel break is. Fishing that ledge. Uh, it also means fishing big main lake points and fishing bluff walls. Uh, for guys that are on reservoirs, if you're on more of a highland reservoir, a steeper reservoir, it's going to mean spending your time on humps, if you have humps, or on the big main lake rocky points hard bottom is key rocky is key um, for guys on more lowland reservoirs long tapering points if you can find rock piles on those or rock piles on high spots islands creek channel bends anywhere where that rock gets exposed or just hard bottom gets exposed it can be shell fish will tend to gather on that stuff so it's not complicated once you understand where you should be looking. Then you just get on your map and you start looking for things that fit the bill. You get out, you catch them on a hump in 18 feet of water. Okay, get on your map, look for more humps between 15 and 20 feet of water. And then you just start running around and trying. Now for the guy who's on the bank, this can be a difficult time of year because he can't cover a bunch of water. But still, you know if you walk out onto those main lake points where big arms come together, that's where those fish are. And again, we may catch them deep on bottom, 20, 30 feet of water. We may catch them on the surface over that deep water and we can catch them anywhere in between the fact that they're on that outside structure doesn't mean that they're deep sometimes on these outside points it's a square bill bite sometimes it's a spinnerbait bite sometimes it's top water and sometimes it's deep cranking throwing a jig throwing a big worm we're gonna make a move we'll start running around see if we can't catch some more fish That's what we're talking about. Look at that swim bait just choked. <laughs> That is the five inch burrito. And he wanted it. Man, that's fun. So you notice I started out with a little bait. Now obviously I'm throwing a much larger bait. The Tennessee River where I am is much more diverse than most fisheries. So here, if I'm in the back of a creek, maybe they're eating a little bait or maybe there's big bait back there. I get out here on the main river. Now I run into them and they're chasing big gizzard shad and I can actually physically see it. If they come up schooling, busting on the surface, I'll actually see the size of the bait fish. So here I have to be prepared with all these different sizes to match what's going on. On your lake, it's probably not that way. You can find the right size bait, whether that's a two inch bait, a four inch bait, an eight inch bait, and you just stick with that and you'll be just fine. But man, when they eat that big bait, dong, I mean, they clobber it. And the nice thing, so this is that five inch burrito. The six inch has been out for a while. The five inch came out recently. The beauty of the five inch is it's a little bit smaller and I can throw it on a jig rod instead of swim bait gear. So this is X Pride 77 Heavy. It's a really good jig rod. I'm throwing it on 
65 pound braid, 20 pound leader. Oop, you just snagged it up. I'm gonna have to go get that. But truly just a jig setup because the bait's not that big, it's not that heavy, and it's just a jig hook. So I could plant it and keep them pinned really comfortably with a good solid jig rod instead of needing to drag a great big swim bait rod out on the boat as well. There he is. That is so much fun. I love swim bait fishing. That's a given. It's one of my favorite things to do. That five inch bait, it's got enough mass that it's a, it's a true swim bait. It's not just a little paddle tail, but it's still small enough that I can do it on lighter gear and I can get a lot of bites. He smoked it while I was reeling it up. A bass jumped and spit out. I don't know what that was, a shiner, a bluegill, something. This one must have heard the commotion. He's got that bait choked. I need pliers to get that out. My goodness. On the way up. Thanks, buddy. I gotta get back in there. So, we're sitting in 23 feet of water and we're sitting right on a shelf or a ledge, if you wanna call it that. But right on a shelf. So, it's about 18 foot on one side of me. I'm sitting in about 23 and then it rolls off into about 30, 32. Just a transition. And right now, the fish are sitting right on that slope. I don't think they're on the top or the bottom. They're sitting right on the slope. So it's deep enough that I can't get a lot of baits down there, right? A smaller swim bait, you'd have a hard time fishing it effectively because I've got a little bit of current. If I didn't have current, you could do it. Uh, I've got a jerk bait, can't really throw that. Top water, unless they come up busting. Crank baits, that's kind of right on the limit of comfortable crank bait fishing without going to really light line. But the swim bait, it's, it's getting it done. Wow, that was subtle. That one just crept up on it. That was really subtle. <laughs> Man, too much fun. I love summer fishing. That is so much fun. Thank you, my friend. Nice fish. Again, that's that Azuma Z-Boss 22. It's going to fish similarly, like between an 8XD and a 10XD. I just like throwing a bait that's a little different than everybody else. And I found that one a few years ago and just catch fish on it everywhere I go this time of year. Got him. Oh, 
he's only got one hook. Come here, buddy. That is so awesome. Summer offshore bass fishing. Got him. Thank you, friend. There we go. Hello. We got something real now. That's big. It's fighting funny. Maybe he's got it fouled. Maybe it's in his tail. <laughs> You're gonna love this. What did I just say? It is literally in his tail. When you fish a lot, you can develop a pretty good feel. Sorry, buddy, for what's going on. <laughs> little guy maybe a late spawn very skinny fish he was hoping to boost back up but not with that all right guys we're gonna wrap it up here it is hot at least we've got a little bit of chop on the water a little bit of a breeze that's made it a little more bearable but uh, i have an appointment i gotta go to this afternoon so i gotta get off the water regardless absolutely had a blast out here you know this time of year you can go shallow you can catch those fish on frogs walking baits poppers a senko a shaky head a jig but you can also back out you can fish offshore you can fish main lake structure and you can catch them on the big bait you catch them on small swim baits the crankbait scroungers there's a few other things i had tied on didn't really throw today but man that was fun we never got a truly giant bite, but I absolutely caught them the way I wanted to catch them. We caught a bunch of them. That was a really fun half day session. This time of year, we start butting up against where the fair weather guys tap out. You know, they're like, it's too hot for me and they bail, they go do something else. Don't be that guy. Because as you can see, summertime fishing is fun. They really do group up. They really do become predictable and you can catch a lot of them in a hurry. If you guys enjoyed the video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you soon.